Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name's Colin. Uh, as Chris said, um, I'm the country manager, managing director of Wing Vietnam. I'm responsible for making sure the whole ship floats and goes in the right direction. So I'm constantly thinking about how to drive our business or what's affecting our business in a strategic sense. So tonight I was supposed to talk about that, and uh, I'm apologizing to all of you. I think I've shifted that a little bit to share more with you about a topic that's been on my mind for the last, I don't know, say, uh, half a year or so. Uh, I'm going to go through this quickly, and then we can jump into questions and more. Um, if anybody else, I think, is in the question stage, you can talk to me about what it is that you may want to get on. But it, I always like to say, great minds think alike. I think some of the points you've heard already are up here. Very long story short, technology has destroyed advertising. Um, and as much as we like to believe that there's still a lot of different uh, media points out there, it is frightening to see how much Facebook and Google control uh, what you see and what you do. Don't. Uh, yes, content is king. I always like to say, though, well, hold on, conversations are queens now. Um, it's, it's more about the engagement that the content brings you. So those are the things that I'm going to touch on. I'll keep going back to this. Another thing that I see uh, in our business is that more and more advertisers are willing to give up uh, mass reach in exchange to directly connect to you. I'm always impressed. Uh, you'll see Unilever spend... Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. How many people are in the agency business here? Anybody? Anybody from Unilever? Before I get in trouble? Um, I'm always impressed to see that they'll spend, say, you know, $10 million on a campaign and then will be so excited that a thousand people liked a post on Facebook. Um, this just blows my mind that, again, these massive advertisers are much more interested to see their money working for them by witnessing that engagement firsthand. Uh, we know that we've all been hurting, that certainly the publishers are, but I'm going to point out, or at least I believe, that advertisers also are hurting because of the way the, that media is changing and the way that we consume media. Um, uh, I, I like to joke here that we do share the same savior for Jesus is getting plugged in a, in a media pitch here. Um, so I, I'm going to argue that we have the same savior, but we just have different ways of going about it. Um, this is my men for the night. I wouldn't be surprised if you continue to see more and more conflicts arising between certainly the publishers and the agencies, but also even the clients as we move forward in this brave new world. Uh, in the short term, medium term, I think this guy is going to run away. He's going to make a lot of money. Uh, that is, the clients are going to benefit from this conflict between the agencies and the publishers. And uh, I certainly want to highlight again that Facebook and Google will be generating a lot of that money as well. So before I jump into the musings and what's terrifying me, exciting me about you know the media business, I'll just quickly go through what Ringier is. Um, we are a Swiss company. I'm an American. Um, uh, the company has uh, been in Vietnam for 20 plus years. We do three things basically. We do international titles like L and Women's Health. These are media brands that we bring in and develop them locally. We also build directories. So for example, we do uh, wedding directory websites uh, and much more. And then finally, some of my colleagues from our classified business are here tonight. We primarily focus on women and an upper end segment. Uh, there are the three divisions that we do in some of our brands. These are some of our values. Uh, I'll go through these things quickly. And here again, getting back to what Wolf and even Chris has talked about uh, a little bit earlier, but how important it is in, in, in my business that we touch the reader where they are and across multiple points. If I stood up here and said I only publish websites, I'd be worried about my business. If I stood up here and said I did print magazines, I'd be definitely worried about my business. Um, so again, we're very, very diversified in what we do. Um, and so far it's working. Here are some of the figures. I won't go into it too much, but we're pleased with the, the amount of engagement that our strategy is starting is generated and uh, how much content our team is building and churning out and how important it is to our business, especially as our circulations and our engagement with our audiences grow over time. But 
here. I'm not standing up here because I know everything. We have failed considerably. In fact, I pride myself on how many times I've been uh, completely wrong and managed to recover. Um, they say, so, I think somebody said that the definition of an, an expert is someone who's made all the right mistakes in a particular uh, set of field. Okay, so I'm going to just take you through how, as a, the country manager, I have seen the business going and where I'm trying to steer the company. And if that has of any interest to you, we can talk about it later in the question and answer session. So, no surprise, but that's growing. Uh, we know that social is just killing it. Uh, we know that we want more for our money, especially when times are bad. We know that Facebook has destroyed everything in its path. That's just a chart showing you that there used to be something called Zing. It doesn't exist really much anymore. Here's something, again, just showing you about Southeast Asia online video. I mean, it's incredible to see how much Vietnam consumes online video. And uh, YouTube just, just, there's no point. I, that's not true. There, there are some competitors to YouTube in Vietnam, but uh, mm, I, I would be on the YouTube side if I were you. So we know we all have to go digital. That's not, cl uh, not the question. The problem is everybody knows that, and uh, the ability to go digital is so much easier than it's ever been. Now suddenly everybody is a publisher, and you can see all the stuff that that publisher and that client and that company are trying to pitch you. So it's just insane how much is out there. The problem is all that's going up and all of our engagement is going down. So we talk about print ads and measurement. Well, guess what? Display ads suck. Um, no one is clicking on those things. So here's a funny chart. This is an old, old one. But here, look, I mean, that's just the world's uh, the number of websites versus the world's internet population years ago. And you can only imagine how that skyrocketed even further. So the disparity between how many of us are out there and how much stuff there is to watch is just growing. Even more importantly, people are cutting their television cable subscriptions. They're going more and more directly to the source of their content. So. What I'm basically saying to you is, I'm a little scared. I'm scared. I don't see advertising uh, looking good, uh, at least in the short and the midterm. Yes, campaigns matter. Yes, branding matters, definitely. But the ability to not look at an ad today is so easy that it worries me about reaching out to uh, potential customers and, and my business. Um, that, I think you guys may have seen this, this, this is the people taking pictures of the Pope. We all know mobile is, uh, is getting there. And again, you know, 50 plus percent of our web traffic comes through a mobile device. That's going to increasingly grow. We're not going to see display ads get any sexier or better on these devices. Um, so again, where can the old business model of advertising come through? I believe, and I think you've heard this before, that there's only one thing that's going to cut through this clutter, and uh, that's where I'm taking our business. Uh, before we get there, who, who, this, is a, this is just some examples I, that I want to show you. That, again, what I've discovered is certainly not a secret here at all. Does anyone know this site, Baby Center? Owned by Johnson & Johnson. Um, Baby Center is a, a community of first uh, moms. Um, and Johnson & Johnson is happy to have them at their fingertips. Everyone knows Red Bull. Did you know that Red Bull Media is getting bigger than Red Bull itself? It's not just happening overseas. Here's a, there's a brand called Kotex in Vietnam. They've created a website called Girl Space. So they try to create their own website and generate uh, attention through this uh, direct channel. Can anybody tell me who makes this website? Of course, you'll, you'll, you'll look at this and kill them. Or not, I don't know, what do you think? Who makes this website, can you guys see? Little tiny logo, I got a laser pointer. Dutch Lady. So they have cloned uh, Baby Center's functionality by like 10% and uh, slapped up a tiny logo up there hoping that you'll come and see their website. Here's a great one, even e-commerce is uh, getting into print. Uh, 
you guys may know Netta Porter. They've recently published a magazine called Porter Magazine. And, you know, generally why I'm showing these examples is because they all have one thing in common. What is that one thing? Right. It's content. All of these brands now realize that the only way to reach their audience effectively is to generate a very specific and well thought out um, stream of content. I don't like to say just content, sorry, I'm giving away. I, I always say it just can't be content, it has to be strategic. You have to, as Chris said, you have to really think. Imagine if content were a brand, you'd have to really think about what your audience wants and then you'd have to think about how to optimize it every single minute, not day, not week, not month, so that it can perform as you need it. I, I refer to this as SOC. And without SOC, none of the things that I want to do for my business or that you probably want to do for your business are going to work. No SOC, no Facebook, no YouTube, no websites, no e-newsletters. So these are the benefits, traffic, loyalty, engagement, conversions. Uh, it's, it, by having great content, you at least have a shot at capturing people's attention. The problem is, especially for non-publishers, like, um, uh, you know, if, even if you're a large company in, in, in a developing market or emerging market, you probably still don't have the firepower to generate the kind of content required to, to captivate an audience. So it's very difficult to make, for example, uh, milk as well as be a publisher. So it's quite hard, it's expensive, it's distracting, and it's made for a very specific audience. Funny enough, guess who's pretty good at content? Here is um, an old example. These are magazine publishers. The problem is magazine publishers don't think like agencies and they certainly aren't very good at thinking like clients. Um, but I, I'm always amazed to talk to editors, talk to publishers and see how they think. They, they can brand content quite well and they get to the nitty gritty of one specific audience. Who in their mind thought that there should be a magazine called Twins and uh, oh, there's a guy, see? There, there's a guy right there who's a subscriber to Twins probably. But again, in a world that is so cluttered, and as Chris pointed out, it is key that you understand who you're trying to reach and uh, you are able to consistently and effectively communicate with that person, that audience, again and again and again. And it's funny enough, publishers are good at that. But uh, this, everything I'm telling you is not a secret, and uh, I hope I'm not boring you too much. But what's important is that everyone's going to go this direction. So here are my future predictions. Um, we're, we're going to watch advertisers demand more and more for their campaigns. With Google and Facebook, they can tell you precisely the audience and precisely the interaction and engagement. This is like frosting on a cinnamon cake. You love this. If you're a marketing person and you can see how your money is working for you, you love it. Even if it's only 1,000 people, you love it. So I'm afraid the genie is out of the bottle. The measurement of uh, advertising is, is here to stay. Uh, again, here I also point out, I think, as we saw with Red Bull and Johnson & Johnson, we're going to continue to see companies become publishers. Um, and here, uh, I think publishers are going to realize that, wait a second, we know the audience, we have the designers, we have the the capabilities to, to do all the things that agencies do, so why the hell are we giving away our business to the agencies? So I think you're gonna see, again, that, that conflict between the publishers and the agencies get worse and worse. And at the same time, agencies are very smart, talented, handsome people, and uh, they are going to probably put more and more investments and resources into developing publishing as well as content agencies, as Wolf said, into their business. And I think it's all going to be one big mess in the short term, maybe even medium term. 
Um, so to kind of summarize and find the finish up here, everybody in the future is going to be a content creator. And uh, it's going to be quite hard to know where and who is good at publishing content. Which unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you're, you're looking at it, is going to mean that technology is going to continue to play a critical role in the future of media, the future of the agency business. In the future, I predict that all of us are publishers, and technology will be able to say, would you like to bring up these publishers that target these things? And you don't need to con uh, connect with an agency at all. Um, these publishers will come through our system, develop campaigns, and that we will measure them and engage uh, uh, for you with these campaigns. And so, at the, at the blink, uh, with a few clicks of the mouse, you can not only uh, post uh, something to Facebook, but you could commission a, um, a vlogger, a beauty vlogger, to talk about your product, as well as a publisher, uh, a magazine publisher, to write a PR article for you. So again, we're going to continue to see how the business is affected uh, by technology and the fact that we can all become content creators. Um, good news is, uh, things are going to be get more and more uh, inexpensive for you and you're going to have more and more options as you move forward. Um, what that does to your discerning tastes will be the trillion dollar question. So thank you very much.